all right guys welcome back to the channel thank you for checking the video out we have more playstation news rumors and leaks to go over and cover today so before we get into these topics do me a favor as always if you do end up enjoying this video or finding it informative make sure you leave it a like and if you are new here to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button as well i also want to let everybody know that tomorrow sunday at 12 p.m eastern i will be going live with the next episode of press x podcast here on the channel so if you're interested in watching that and hanging out with me feel free to stop by the first topic we're diving into very briefly is coming from the official playstation twitter account where they say the new ps5 console covers in starlight blue galactic purple and nova pink are available in select regions starting today now that was actually posted yesterday but i want to remind everybody if these are colors you're interested in for your playstation 5 you know, picking up these covers, go check this out. Let me know if you're planning on picking one of these three up or maybe all three. Next up, we're talking about the 2023 lineup for PlayStation 5 as well as PlayStation 4, but we're mainly focused on PS5 here. So I came across an article from Push Square where the title reads, the PS5 PS4 release schedule in 2023 is officially ridiculous. Now it goes on to say Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was revealed just a few days ago, complete with a winter 2023 release window. And it got us thinking, just how stacked is 2023 for PS5 and PS4 gaming? The answer, extremely, to the point where if the majority of these launch targets hold, we could be looking at one of the strongest years in PlayStation history. No, seriously, have a look at the list. Most of these games don't have release dates yet, but at the time of writing, they're all scheduled for 2023 and so i'm going to put this list up on screen so you can check it out but the article finishes by saying and the thing is more games will be added to this list over the next several months and beyond this is far from finalized there are heavy hitters in abundance many of which are skipping last gen consoles entirely the likes of dead space resident evil 4 final fantasy 16 final fantasy 7 rebirth alan wake 2 marvel spider-man 2 pragmata Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Street Fighter 6, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League could all be absolute blockbusters, big budget games with the potential to set the sales charts on fire. Now, of course, some of these games might not make 2023. The aforementioned Final Fantasy VII Rebirth immediately springs to mind. Is Square Enix really going to release two tentpole Final Fantasy games within six months of each other? We're struggling to believe, but if it does happen, Still, there's no denying the potential that's on what's on show here, a truly ridiculous release schedule as it stands. And so I thought this was a cool article because, I mean, yeah, we still are in the middle of 2022 and there's no doubt there are a lot of great games that are going to be releasing before the end of this year. I think many of us are hoping that God of War Ragnarok doesn't end up making this list of games for 2023 and obviously not all of these games that we're looking at are exclusive to the ps5 the majority of them are multi-platform but some of the exclusives that we are looking at such as spider-man 2 final fantasy 16 and final fantasy 7 rebirth i mean they're huge games they're going to be colossal games honestly and you also have to think about star wars knights of the old republic if that's going to be targeting a 2023 release it's also worth noting that recently Jim Ryan said there are two unannounced live service games launching between now and March 2023. So it wouldn't surprise me if one of those live service games that have yet to be announced releases in either January, February or March of next year. And, you know, when you think about Sony doing a potential event in September, there's no doubt that if that's what they choose to do, most of the games, if not all of the games that are going to be announced there or shown off will be targeting 2023. So very exciting times ahead, guys. Just wanted to kind of talk about this since we just got the announcement of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Let me know your thoughts on the 2023 lineup for PlayStation 5, both exclusive wise and multi-platform. The next topic talks about Housemark, and they're talking about their new IP that they're making for PS5 currently and how there were ideas that they had for Returnal that just simply didn't make it. And now that they're more familiar with developing for the PS5 and the engine that they're making their next game on, they feel as though they're comfortable looking at some of those ideas and trying to incorporate them into this upcoming new IP. So this is what Housemark's senior narrative designer told VGC. 
They said, Returnal was so ambitious, we dreamt super big, but we still had to leave so much on the cutting room floor. All of these ideas and narrative systems, I'm super excited to pick up those pieces and see how those fit in our new IP story. We didn't quite have the handle on how big Returnal was going to be. Building for a new platform on a new engine with a new team, all of those things require some learning. Now we have the team that has gone through the fire and learned how to build a game like Returnal. So now we get off to a stronger start. And so, yeah, this is a pretty cool thing to hear because I think we are going to be seeing their new IP sooner than maybe anticipated because it is true that they had to build Returnal from the ground up with a new engine on hardware that they weren't familiar with. And you could tell it was probably a stressful process or at the very least a difficult one. And they feel a lot more comfortable uh, with the development of their next game. And also the fact that they are a PlayStation first party studio, they're gonna have Sony's full backing and support now. And it's worth noting that um, they were asked about Returnal 2 and Housemark's senior narrative designer said, if we return to Celine's story after the new game, remains to be seen but at the moment i can't comment uh, on that too much so you know it sounds like they're leaving the door open you know for a returnal to possibly one day but definitely not until they're done with their new ip so there's your update on housemark next up we're talking about the new playstation plus premium and extra service and how it seems that sony is not the only video game publisher that thinks they're doing it right by not putting their games onto the service day and date. Reading from PlayStation Universe, it says here, Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of Take-Two, has firmly backed Sony's new PlayStation Plus service, which focuses more on a catalog choice of games rather than getting releases out on day one alongside their retail counterparts. Speaking with GI.biz, the executive noted that subscription day one releases doesn't make any sense to us in terms of economics, and he isn't sure consumers are ready to buy into the idea either. And so here is the full quote from Strauss Zelnick. Our skepticism has been around making frontline console products available day and date with subscription. That doesn't make any sense to us because economically speaking, we don't think our customers are prepared to pay for that, and we can't afford to turn our business upside down in a way that doesn't make sense economically. There always has to be an intersection between what the customer wants and what the publisher is able to do. And you know, it doesn't make sense to do that for our properties. That's our opinion, and I think Sony agrees with us because it said so. It can potentially be great for catalog properties, sales of properties that have been in the market for a while and their price has been reduced. It can make economic sense to offer those on a subscription basis. And so I thought this was pretty important to highlight because we have the CEO of another major video game publisher, that being Take-Two Interactive, basically picking their side here and choosing Sony's side, saying that they agree with what Sony is saying when it comes to why they're not doing day and date releases and basically pointing out that uh, most other, I'd say not most other, but pretty much every other video game publisher can simply not afford to do this because they're not backed by like a trillion dollar uh, corporation such as Microsoft. I mean, that's one of the main reasons Microsoft is able to do this, but something else I do want to highlight here, because some people might find it confusing, when he says that the customer may not be ready to pay for that, um, some people might be confused by this because they're like, wait, aren't these subscription services cheap? Well, what he is referring to is paying what would be necessary to maintain the quality of these game releases that we get. I mean, when you think about Take-Two Interactive, you think about how much money goes into games like Red Dead Redemption 2, and Grand Theft Auto, even though they're, you know, very far spread out releases. But more specifically, when you look at Sony and how much money goes into their big budget AAA games, that's pretty much what he means. The cost required on a monthly basis for a subscription that drops big budget games like that consistently or as consistently as like Sony does, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. If it did, they would already be doing it, but it doesn't. So just thought that this was interesting to go over. Figured I'd let you guys know. Uh, next up, we're talking about the Gran Turismo movie because we have new information on this. Reading from PlayStation Lifestyle, it says Deadline reports that Columbia Pictures and PlayStation Productions' Gran Turismo movie is set for release in August 2023, and it'll be based on a true story. 
It says here it looks like Gran Turismo shares the same plot with a cancelled movie that was announced way back in the day. In July 2013, the rap reported that a Gran Turismo movie was being produced by, wait for it, 50 Shades of Grey producers. The last we heard of that project was in 2015 when The Hollywood Reporter revealed that it'll tell the story of a gamer who ends up racing cars in real life. That is indeed the story of a number of real life Gran Turismo players. So. It's unclear if the movie will specifically be based on one person's story or if it will be a mix of several true stories. And so this is the latest synopsis. It says, based on a true story, the film is the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills won a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. So there you go, guys. This is what we're hearing about the Gran Turismo movie. And so... Yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Next up, I want to briefly let you guys know that this game, Evil West, which is coming out in September, I think a lot of you are already looking forward to this. Apparently, it looks really good, and I actually wasn't familiar with this title, but I came across an article from Push Square where it says, Evil West gameplay looks like God of War with guns, which definitely caught my attention, and I started watching some of the gameplay. And I have to say... It does look uh, really good, and I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing here. It says, if you're growing tired of AAA open-world games, Evil West looks like it could be the perfect tonic, a third-person linear action game from publisher Focus Entertainment. It has a similar combat system to God of War, except replace the Leviathan Axe with cowboy weaponry, and then throw vampires into the mix. And so it's coming out on September 20th on both PS5 and PS4. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to show you a clip of it here, but I'll have this link down below so you can watch the entire gameplay clip for yourself. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Be sure to leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what you have to say. Again, leave the video a like if you enjoyed it or found it informative. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.